Hi, my name is Sean Gibson. I'm the president of the Ontario Barber Association. We've been fighting the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities for years. We continue to fight. The Ministry has put up opposition against us using the Ontario Colleges of Trades and hairstylists to give us a hard time establishing our own industry and our own trade. We're hoping that this documentary spreads and sheds the light on what our true issues and challenges are as a trade, as an industry, and here in Ontario as professionals. It's been a problem and it's been something that we've had on our plate for years. Maybe my colleagues can speak to it a little better. And I know sometimes you as the viewer have experienced the same thing out there in the industry. We didn't really discuss barbering at the school. Mm -hmm. We had one day where uh, guys came in, we huddled around, uh, he shaved a client and then he went home. Oh, and that was, that was my uh, introduction to <laughs> of barbering at the school. Okay. Uh, it was a 573 page textbook. I searched through it and I found a page and a quarter on how to do a man's haircut. Wow. Wow. So it was pretty limited in experience at 10 months there. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to figure out where can I learn how to cut men's hair. I figured I would learn that at hair school, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just not adequate. Uh, there's not enough training. Um, and I didn't leave the school. I may have cut three men's haircuts the whole time I was there. I mean, first of all, we don't have a school that actually trains barbering. No. They teach hair cutting, but that's no. not barbering. No, no, they not. Don't teach hair, uh, they don't teach hairdressing. Yeah. They teach hair cutting and they call it hair styling. Every cut is a style, but the actual barber trade has to be taught, yes. has to be taught. Yes. And it's just so different from hair styling. It's, Absolutely. Uh, you can't hardly imagine it until I get one of those people that run this show into my shop and show them what really has to be done. Oh, yeah. It's hard to explain. Absolutely. You know? but there Absolutely. is a huge difference between the two trades. In 1999, we really started to push forward. We really tried to make a difference from a lobbying standpoint, from going to meetings, having meetings with the industry committee, who at that time was arm's length with the ministry, trying to convey the real challenges that we experienced, the inadequacies and the fact that we weren't recognized. We're not hairstylists, we're barbers, and there's a distinct difference. Before, I'm an old-time barber. I've been in Canada for 61 years. Yeah. Worked hard, paid taxes, and uh, donated money to all kinds of organizations, yeah. all kinds of political parties, yep. and they better listen to us. Yep. You know? uh, yep. Because this is a shame that all of a sudden they tell me, you're a barber, you're nothing, you know? Yes. This is, doesn't work, no. okay? There's a suggestion that we want to separate barbering from hairstyling. Well, we do. We do want to separate it. But what we've been looking for is autonomy. Uh, barbering right now does not exist. Hairstyling is said to have already encompassed barbering, but it doesn't. We're looking for a designation. You don't have to separate the trade totally, but giving us a designation or a branch so we're, we, we can foster our own professionalism and we can encourage our own trade. That's exactly what we're looking for as an association and as a body of professionals throughout the province. You know, when I look back on it now, there wasn't, you know, they put a number two clipper on, you go straight up the side, cut the top. So that, that was it in terms of barbering. I wasn't, uh, there was no curriculum or, you know, and I didn't miss a day of school. Yeah. Uh, there was nothing about fading. There was nothing about blending. Wow. Uh, you come up the sides with the clippers and then you blend it in with the thinning shears. So not, this is not just your experience. This is across Ontario likely that a lot of other programs and schools that, that are out there, they're doing the exact same thing. Well, that's what I'm starting to hear now, Sean. I have quite a few people come in every month asking me, how do I get into barbering? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's sad. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell them. So they're looking at me going, you own a barber shop, yeah. and you can't direct me how to become a barber. Right, right. Quite honestly, I can't, you know, no. unless I'm sending them through you. Yeah. Uh, to learn some things there, but aside from that, I've got no direction to give them. You know, they can go to hair school for 10 months or a year, but coming out of that, the focus is 98% on women's hair. As an association, we've been very proactive. So we've done a lot to make sure we're advocating effectively for barbers. Uh, we met with Kevin Whitaker with the Ministry of Labor, right when he was putting together his report to administer to the ministry. We've got letters from MPPs. We've uh, actually, the association put together a bill, Bill PR45, and sent it to Queen's Park. Sherry DeNovo was the one that put it forward. We've done that. 
We've done everything possible to make sure that we are able to translate from ministry to industry. These are our challenges. This is our issue. But they're not listening. Barbers are just not men. We also have members of part of our association that are women. And to speak for the women uh, barbers out there, Lily had a lot to say. Something has to be done because even myself, mm -hmm. I can't hire anybody to come and work for me. Can you express um, or explain that problem? Because we had another um, uh, barber that has the exact same problem. What's well, there's the challenge? A, we're not the only two. Lots of barber shops out there. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult for them to keep staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, what? there's lots of people out there who don't want to be doing women's hair. Right, right. They want to be doing barber like us, you and I. Right, right. They don't want to be doing uh, pin curls. Right. My God, who's doing pin curls these days anymore? They're teaching them. Yes, that's a very big part of the curriculum in school. Why? <laughs> Good question. Right, right. Okay, <clears throat> it's the same question. Why isn't barbering being applied? Or a, so much of it, at least the base. Mm -hmm. Teach the the te you know the students the base mm -hmm. of barbering, right? And then I can take over or yourself, right? Okay, and we have something that we can work with. The reason much of this continues to perpetuate is because barbers are not part of this process. We're not at the table. We're not recognized. We're not in any legislation. We don't exist. We need to exist. And as the association, that's what we've been advocating for all these years having that place at the table. We have a formula and a program and a model that's very successful and has worked for years. We just need to get the ministry on board. Industry is supposed to guide this. We are industry. There is no other association in Ontario that is built like ours. There is no other institution like the Barber Center that does what we do. We just need to convey that to the ministry. We've been, we've been lobbying the ministry for years. Now, with the new creation of the Ontario Colleges of Trades, we've worked with them, but they keep on putting everything back on the ministry. The Ontario Colleges of Trades, their whole purpose was to uh, help trade, recognize trade, but they don't even recognize us. They're telling us that we don't recognize you. Um, it's not us, it's them. So we've gone from just dealing with the ministry to dealing with the Ontario Colleges of Trades, back to the ministry, back to the Ontario Colleges of Trades. Neither of them knows what's going on. They're both clueless. However, the Ontario Barber Association has created a group of professionals to represent ourselves. And we've done that from the inception in 2007. Our membership is up to 200 plus members. And we have our own curriculum. We have our own programs. We have our own a professional working group. So we don't necessarily need the ministry or the government to, to, to look over us. We've been trying to work with them, but they don't want to work with us, so they don't want to work with anybody but themselves. They now know I exist, because I got a bill in the mail for $120. Wow, so I'm thinking, they're recognizing me, this is great. Okay. Oh, but they're recognizing me for three times what the fee was, but I'm not getting any of the advantages by paying this fee. Right. Why should I pay a fee and become a member of something that where I'm not recognized? Uh, because all I'm doing is giving them money to leave me alone. Yeah, uh, really. Hush it, money. It, it is. We'll yeah. leave you alone. We're going to bust you at the shop. Just pay us. Just pay us, and that's it. Robbery. Yeah, that's and they're good. good. They keep sending me the bill. Mm -hmm. They keep saying this and that. But when I want to talk to anybody or deal with anything, so well, we're right. working on that. Yeah. So I'm wondering how long it took them to figure out let's make it $120. Probably a few days. Yeah. Pretty quick meeting. Oh, yeah. So I'm wondering, you know, what's the process for developing barbers and getting young people back into our trade? I would like to see somebody my age, younger or older, to be able to walk into a barber shop and say, hey, listen, this is something that I would really like to do. I'm interested in it. I've cut friends' hair, I've cut family's hair, and I would really like to learn the aspects of the trade that you can't learn out of a book. No. I want to be able to walk into a shop and know that there's five or six apprentices, people that are going to support their families and that are going to open small businesses to support our communities. Powerful, yeah. powerful. Support a candidate that supports you, that supports us as professionals. Because any other vote for anything else 
will have us unemployed in 2015.